Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's 71 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam, and in today's video we're going to go through the topics, and we've got a few different topics today. We've got skills, maps, and compass directions, so they're quite closely linked together, so we'll look at how to answer questions on skills, maps, and compass directions, and there'll be some for you to try as well. But then also we're going to go through the topic of views, so that's your plan views, your side elevation, your front elevation, things like that. And if you've got the Corp Maths Revision card, card number 31, is the code manager revision card on views and hopefully it might be quite useful for you as well. So in this video, we're going to go through a few different topics, skills, maps, compass directions, and then those views as well. So I hope you find this video useful. So let's get started. Okay, so to start off with, we're going to look at skills and maps. Then we're going to look at compass directions and then we'll look at views. So looking at skills and maps to begin with, here we've got a diagram. It's a map and we've got Leek and Milton, two made up towns, and we've got this scale. The one centimeter represents 30 miles. And the question says, what is the actual distance between Leek and Milton? So if we wanted to find the actual distance between Leek and Milton, what we're going to do is we're going to measure the distance on the page. So you'd get your ruler and you'd measure the distance and you'd measure it as accurately as you can. So that's eight centimeters. Now you might get 8.2 or 8.5 and so on. In this case, I've got exactly eight centimeters. So that's eight centimeters apart on the diagram. And the question is, what's the actual distance between Leek and Milton? So one centimeter represents 30 miles. So if they were one centimeter apart, they'd be 30 miles apart in real life. If they were two centimeters apart in the map, then there'd be six. 60 miles apart. If they're three centimeters apart in the diagram, then in real life they'd be 90 miles apart and so on. So because they're eight centimeters apart in the diagram, we're going to do eight lots of 30 and that'll tell us the distance they're apart in real life. So we're going to do eight multiplied by 30. And if we do eight lots of 30, but eight times three is 24. So eight times 30 would be 240. So that means in real life, the actual distance apart of Leek and Milton would be 240 miles. And that's it. So you just measured the distance, which is eight centimeters, and you just multiply that by 30. And then you do eight times 30. 240 and this was 240 miles apart and that's it if we measure this and instead of it being exactly 8 centimeters we got 8.2 centimeters for instance we would do 8.2 multiplied by 30 and then that would tell us the distance apart there in real life and so on okay so here's a question for you to try so here we've got a diagram we've got a bus station and a school and we're told our scale is that one centimeter represents 500 meters and the question is what is the actual distance between the school and the bus station and if we measured the distance between them we get that's equal to six centimeters so in, on our diagram they're six centimeters apart so feel free to pause the video now and work out the actual distance between the school and the bus station so on our diagram they're six centimeters apart and we're told that one centimeter represents 500 meters so every single centimeter apart they are on the diagram that represents 500 meters so because on our diagram they're six centimeters apart that's six lots of 500 so we'll do six multiplied by 500 and that'll tell us the actual distance apart the school is from the bus station so six times 500 well six lots of 500 is 3,000 so that's 3,000 meters so that means that the bus station and the school are 3,000 metres apart. Now we could change this into kilometres if we wanted to. That in kilometres, if we divide this by 1,000, would be 3 kilometres. So the actual distance apart of the school and the bus station is 3,000 metres, or in kilometres, 3 kilometres. And if you got that, well done. Okay, now let's have a look at compass directions. So it's important you know your compass directions, so north, east, south, and west. And some people remember saying such as never eat shredded wheat. I do like shredded wheat, so do eat shredded wheat, but that wouldn't work here. We need an end, so we're going to go for never eat shredded wheat. So never eat shredded wheat, north, east, south, and west. And in the middle of north and east, you've got north, east. In between south and east, you've got south, east. In between south and west, you've got southwest. And in between north and west, you've got northwest. So it's important you know those compass directions. So here we've got a diagram. We've got Castleton, League, Donhampton, Milton, and Sancliffe. And the first question says, which direction is Donhampton from League? So from League, what direction is Donhampton? So feel free to press pause and try this question out yourself. Okay, so obviously if you're at League, from League, you've got North, East, South, and West. So which direction is Donhampton from League? It would be East. So the answer would be East. Okay, next question. Our next question says, which direction is Sancliffe from Donhampton? So from Donhampton. So pause the video and think, which direction is Sancliffe from Donhampton? Okay, so we've got, if we're from Donhampton, it means we're at Donhampton. So we've got north, east, south, and west. And as you can see, Sancliffe is south of Donhampton, so south. And if you got those, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So at this time again, we've got the same towns in the same diagram, and we're asked we're asked two more questions. It says which direction is the leak from Castleton, and which direction is the leak from Sancliffe? So feel free to press pause and write down which direction leak is from Castleton, and which direction leak is from Sancliffe. Okay, our first one, which direction is leak from Castleton? So from Castleton, we're at Castleton. So we've got never eat shredded wheat. And we want to know which direction leak is from Castleton. So as you can see, we're going in between south and east. That would be southeast. 
Okay, so we've done the first one. You've got that right. Well done. And the next question says, which direction is leak from Sand Cliff? So this time we're at Sand Cliff. And we're trying to find which direction leak is. So we've got north, east, south, and west. So which direction is leak from Sand Cliff? Well, that would be, it's in between north and west. So it would be northwest. So northwest. And if you got those right, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, so we've looked at scales and we've looked at compass directions. Let's put them together. So here we've got some questions on maps. So we've got League and Milton. And we've got North going up. So going upwards on this diagram is North. And we're told that Red Town is 120 miles east of League. Show Red Town on the map. So we're told that Red Town is 120 miles east of League, and we're told a scale that one centimetre represents 30 miles. So every time we've got 30 miles, we're going to do one centimetre on this diagram. So if we take the 120 miles and we divide that by 30, that's equal to 30, 60, 90, 120. That's four. So that means that it's going to be four centimetres on our diagram. So we're going to draw Red Town on this diagram so that it's four centimetres east of League. So we've got League here. We've got North east south and west so east is going to be to the right here so we've got leak and we're going to go four centimeters to the right of that so you get your ruler and your pencil and you'd measure four centimeters so you'd measure that exactly using your ruler and you'd find out where that is so that's exactly four centimeters there and then you'd put up a little cross and then you'd write red town and that's where red town would be it would be four centimeters to the right of leak on the diagram obviously it's 120 miles in real life but on our diagram it's four centimeters to the right because that's to the east and that's it Okay, now let's have a look at another question. So this is one for you to think about now yourself. So we've got a diagram, we've got North going upwards, we've got Leek and Milton, and we're told that Wales is 60 miles south of Milton. Show Wales on the map. So feel free to press pause, jot this out if you wanted to, and draw on your map where Wales would be. Okay, so we're also given a scale. It was one centimetre represents 30 miles. So because it's 60 miles, that's going to be 30, 60, that's going to be two centimetres. So that means that Wales is going to be two centimetres south of Milton on our diagram. So here's Milton, and we've got north, east, south, and west. So it's south is going to be downwards, so it's going to be two centimetres below Milton. So you get your ruler and your pencil, you'd measure two centimetres, you'd mark where that is, and then you would label that Wells, and that means that the Wells would be there. It would be exactly two centimetres south of Milton on the diagram. Obviously, that would be 60 miles south of Milton in real life, so Wells would be there, and that's it. Okay, so let's have a look at our next topic, which is views and elevations. So whenever you're given a three-dimensional ship, you might be asked to draw things such as the plan view. I like to think of that in terms of the bird's eye view, the view down from the top. You have also might be asked to draw the front elevation, so what it looks like from the front or the side elevation. So let's start off with the plan view, so looking down from it from above. So if you're looking down from it from above, what would you say so this is the front of the ship you're looking down from it so if you were looking down from above you would see the ship here i like to think of it a bit like being a bit of a set of stairs like so so if this was the front it would be one two three four across it'd be one two three four across like so so if you're looking down from it so this is obviously the front so then this would be the left hand side where you'd have one two three four going up so one two three four going up you would then have then one going across, down, across, down, across, down, across, down. So it would look like this. So if you were looking down on the ship from above, it would look like this. You would have the front of it, like so. You would then have the left-hand side, like so. And then you'd have those uh, across, down, across, down, across, down, across, down. And that would be the view of the ship from above. That's the plan view from above. Okay, so we've looked at the plan view. Now let's have a look at the front elevation. So that's the view from the front of the ship. So if you were here and you were looking, there's you. If you were looking at the ship, then you would see this rectangle it would be a rectangle which would be four wide and one high it would look like so so that's what you would see that would be the front elevation of that ship and that's it so that would be the front elevation if you were standing at the front of the ship and you were looking at it you would see that rectangle and that's it okay now in terms of the side elevation well, the side elevation, it depends which side you might be looking at it from. If you were standing over on this side and you were drawing the side elevation, so if you were looking at it from this side, what would you see? Well, you would see a rectangle, and it would be a four by one rectangle. So it would look something like this. So this would be the front elevation if you're looking at this shape from the left-hand side. Now, in terms of the side elevation, unless you're told you know, the side elevation is from this way, you can draw either side elevation. So in terms of the side elevation from this side, it would look something like this, where you would have a rectangle, which would be four wide and one high, like so. Now, if you were drawing the side elevation from this side, well, what would you see? Well, if you were looking at it, again, it would be four blocks wide. You would see a block, a block, a block, and a block. Now, you might get the sense that one's behind the other. Um, obviously, it depends how far away you are. You might not actually get to see that really well. If it's something in real life and you're really far away, you might just see those four blocks being across. But you might get the sense that ones might be slightly further back. So what would you see? Well, I would say it would look something like this. So you'd have those four blocks because it would be, if you were looking at it from this side, you'd have four blocks, one, 
two, three, four. But you might get the sense that some are further back. So then you, what you might see is you might see those lines like so. So you see one, two, three, four, like so. And that would be the side elevation. And that's it. So you could have the side elevation from that side, or you could have the side elevation from this side. And if I was I had the choice to draw them, I'd probably just draw that one because it's a bit simpler to draw that side elevation like so. And that would be the side elevation from that side. And that's it. So I've had a look at the plan view, that view down on the shape from above, or I like to think of it, the bird's eye view. We've had a look at the front elevation and we've had a look at the side elevations. Okay, so here's some questions now for you to try yourself. So I've got the shape here. So I've got some blocks and I put them all together. So if I had multi-link cubes, I've put six in the bottom and then another four on top like so. And this is the front of the shape. So this is the front of the shape here. I would like you to start by drawing the plan view of this shape. So draw the plan view of this three-dimensional shape. So if I was drawing the plan view of this three-dimensional shape, so the view from above, what would we see? Well, we would see a rectangle. So it would be a rectangle like so. We'd have these lines here that you would see. So you'd see a rectangle. Now I'm going to show this. So obviously this is the front of the shape. So you'd have here one, two, three going across. The left-hand side, you'd then see one, two. The right-hand side, you'd see one, two. And then you'd have that line going across like so. Now obviously here we've got different levels. So then I would also show that as well to show that these ones are a different level than those ones. And that's it. So that would be the plan view. Okay, so that's the plan view. Next, I would like you to draw the side elevation. You could draw either side elevation. It's up to you which one you'd want to draw. Okay, so if I was drawing the side elevation of this shape, well, I probably would want to draw the side elevation from this side, this left-hand side here. So that would then just be a square. It would be a two-by-two two square, so it would look something like this. So that would be the side elevation from that side. If I want to draw the side elevation from this side, again, it would be a two-by-two two square, so it would be a two-by-two two square as well. But obviously, you've got some that are further back than the others, so I would draw a line across the middle to show there that these ones are further forward than these ones. And that's it. So I'd either say if I was drawing the side elevation from the left-hand side, I'd see that two-by-two square or from this side from the right hand side you would see that two by two square with that line across in the middle and that's it okay and finally can you draw the front elevation of this three-dimensional shape so press pause now and draw the front elevation of the shape okay so if i wanted to draw the front elevation well i would see that shape there so let's draw it so i would have two squares down the base would go across i would come up one in one up one and then join up and then that would be the front elevation and that's it so we've looked at how to draw the plan view, the side elevations, and the front elevation. Sometimes, though, whenever you give them view questions, what might happen is they might give you two of the views, and you might have to draw one of the others. Now, here's a question for you to try. Where I've got a cuboid, and I've got this cuboid, and I've drawn the front elevation and the side elevation, and I would like you to pause the video now and to draw what the plan view of this cuboid would look like. So if I was looking at this cuboid from the front, so here we've got a centimeter square grid. So this is a centimeter square grid. And if I was looking at the cuboid from the front, I can see that it's got a width of four centimeters. So the width of the cuboid would be four centimeters. And the height of the cuboid, if I'm looking at it from the front, this is the height. The height is equal to three centimeters. So that was what the front elevation would tell us. It would tell us how wide the cuboid is from the front, and it would tell us the height of the cuboid. Now in terms of the side elevation, now we're looking at the cuboid from the side. And we can see here that if we're looking at it from the side, again, the height is equal to three centimeters. And that's great. The height is equal to three centimeters. We can see it's three high. But we can see how deep the cuboid is. This is how wide it is from the front. This would be how deep it is, how far back it goes. And we can see that it goes two centimeters back. So the depth for the cuboid is equal to two centimeters. Now, I know with cuboid, sometimes we call it the length, the width, and the height, and so on. I'm going to call it, in this case, the width, the height, and the depth, just because it's giving me an idea of how wide it is from the front, how tall it is, and how deep it goes. So here we've got the width of it is four centimeters the height of it is three centimeters and the depth how far back it goes is two centimeters okay now in terms of the plan view if we were looking down on this cuboid from above well what would we see well it would be a rectangle because it's a cuboid and if you look down on this cuboid from above you're going to see a rectangle or I suppose it could be a square depending on the dimensions but you're gonna have a rectangle or a square so if you're looking down on this cuboid it's going to be a square rectangle that's what we're going to draw now we wouldn't see the height off the cuboid because the cuboid has got a height of three centimeters that's how tall it is off the ground well if you're looking down on it from above you're not going to see See the height of it off the ground. I suppose unless you're looking at something on Google Earth and there's a massive shadow, you won't get a sense of how tall something is unless uh, you obviously have a shadow or something else to give away some clues that it's tall. Um, so if you're looking down on this cuboid, what would you see? Well, we're going to have a rectangle. The width of it is equal to four centimeters. So that means that if we draw the plan view, it'd be four across like so. So it's going to have a width of four. Then if you're looking at the side elevation, we know that it's got a depth of two. That means it's going to go back two. So it's going to go back two centimeters like so. And then we join up. So then that would be the plan view, it would be four wide, and it would go back two, it's got a depth of two. So that's it, so that would be a rectangle, a four by two rectangle, like so, and that's it.
And that's it. So in this video, we've gone through scale. So it's very important you remember what the scales are and how to you know, go from the measurements on your paper to what it would be in real life. And likewise, if you've got a distance given to you in real life, how to go back to what it would be on a map. Maps, obviously how to read maps and where things are in your compass directions. You're never eat shredded weight or whatever you might want to call it. Um, I like shredded weight actually. So we could never eat shredded weight. Do you, you know, and then also your northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest and so on. So remember your compass directions. And then also remember your views. So those plan views, the view from above, the front elevation and the side elevation as well. And you're able to answer questions on those. It's very important you try some practice questions on those. So in the description below, I've put the links to the practice questions. So I hope you find those useful. Also remember to be doing your five a days. So be doing your numeracy, your foundation, your foundation plus five a days, and that little enough approach make a big difference to your confidence. And it'll give you a chance to practice some of the topics that we've gone through already in these 100 days to go videos. So I hope you find this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, if you've got any friends who are revising for their GCSE maths exams, feel free to recommend this video to them as well, just so that they can maybe hopefully enjoy it and um, more people watch it as well. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Bye.